There's no doubt that bifurcation theory gets complicated. It is not easy. Some bifurcations are really weird. There is a way to count the weirdness or degeneracy of a bifurcation, to grade it according to a natural number. This is a very important concept. It takes a little bit of imagination. The big idea is that what matters is the number of parameters that you need in order to unfold the bifurcation to a generic occurrence. So, for example, we've seen that the saddle node just requires that one parameter, mu, whereas the transcritical requires two parameters, mu and a naught is what we called them. This minimal number of parameters needed to get the full picture is a measure of degeneracy. This has a very specific name. This is called codimension. It's a very important concept in topology, and it's really lovely. Codimension means literally complementary dimension. So, for example, if we're working in linear algebra, we have a vector space and a subspace of that vector space. We can make sense of the dimensions of the spaces involved. The codimension of that subspace is the dimension of the orthogonal complement. It is the complementary dimension. Or if you like, it's the difference in dimensions between the ambient space and the subspace. When passing from linear algebra to nonlinear spaces, generalizations of curves and surfaces for which dimension makes sense, then codimension also makes sense. If I have a subspace of a larger space, the codimension of that subspace is going to be the difference in dimensions between the two. Or, if you like, it's the dimension of a complementary space that you need to use to explore what is happening nearby. So, for example, in a three-dimensional space, a surface is going to be codimension one because you need a one-dimensional curve to cross it in a manner that is stable. A curve has codimension two in that three-dimensional space because you need a complementary surface, something with two parameters in order to explore a neighborhood of it. Here's where codimension of a bifurcation comes in. Consider the space of all dynamical systems. That's going to be infinite dimensional. And now within that, we look at the subspace of dynamical systems that exhibit a particular bifurcation. Saddle node, transcritical, pitchfork. Each of these spaces is infinite dimensional. So this is not really easy to compare, but the codimension can still be finite. And indeed it is, and is measured by the dimension of what you need in order to explore a neighborhood of that bifurcation and unfold it. This is why we say that in practice, codimension is really the number of parameters that you need in order to unfold that bifurcation. It is really the complementary dimension between two infinite dimensional spaces of dynamical systems. Now there's a lot of differential topology details that are in the background here that you do not need to know about. As a practitioner, scientist, engineer, what you really need to know is that the codimension is how many parameters you need in order to unfold it. So based on what we have done so far, we see that a saddle node is a codimension one bifurcation, whereas a transcritical bifurcation is codimension two. We needed two parameters in order to unfold that. We're going to show directly after this that the pitchfork bifurcation is also of codimension two and is very interesting. In discrete time systems, the period doubling bifurcation is codimension one. And if you want to push the definitions a little bit farther, we can say that an equilibrium that satisfies the stability criterion for being stable or unstable, a non-degenerate equilibrium is codimension zero. You perturb it, it's still there. The moral of the story is that codimension is the right way to grade the degeneracy of a bifurcation. The lower the codimension, the more likely you are to run into it. And although there are bifurcations of any codimension that you can imagine getting more and more weird and degenerate, 
It's the low-co-dimension ones that matter the most.